The H-Index was proposed by George Hirsch in 2005. It is an index that aims to measure both the productivity and impact of the published work of a scientist or scholar. While there have since been numerous alternatives suggested, the H-Index remains the most widely used quantitative measure of impact. The H-Index is designed to measure both productivity, the number of publications, and citation-based impact, the number of citations, simultaneously. By combining the two measures into a single number, this can reduce the artificial influence on citation counts of one or two highly cited papers. While the H-Index is most commonly associated with use for an individual, it can also be calculated for research groups, institutions, subject areas and journals. To calculate an H-Index, you need to look at the number of articles that have been written by an author or group of authors and the number of citations those articles have received. The H-Index is determined by calculating where H number of articles have been cited H or more times. So for example, an H-Index of 15 means that out of all of an author's publications, 15 articles have received at least 15 citations. Many factors can influence the H-Index. We will discuss these shortly. The citation databases most commonly used to calculate the H-Index are Web of Science and Scopus. Both databases have a feature that will automatically calculate the H-Index based on a retrieved article set. Currently these databases only index journal articles and some conference proceedings. They will not pick up citations in books, most foreign language journals and other sources, including patents and theses. Disciplines that are not well serviced by Web of Science or Scopus may require a manual calculation, pulling together citation data from a number of sources. Publish or Perish is a software program designed to retrieve and analyse academic citations from Google Scholar. Be sure to check data from Google Scholar, as it often misidentifies or duplicates citations, and it can be difficult to ensure all citations are for the one author. It is very important when using the H-Index for grant applications or promotions to state the database from which you retrieve the data, and thus verify the citations. While it might be tempting to use an H-Index figure of 67 from Google Scholar, if your H-Index in Scopus is only 8, then it is not going to look particularly credible. For a practical demonstration of how to find or calculate your H-Index, please view the excellent tutorials prepared by Scopus and Web of Science. It is probable that there will be some differences in the age index calculated in Web of Science and Scopus. This is because the two databases index different publication sources and cover different time periods. Even if the same journal is indexed in both databases, they might cover different date ranges. It is also important to note that the age index automatically calculated in Scopus does not have complete citation information for articles published before 1996. This means if you have a highly cited article prior to 1996, it may not be included in the count. See the information on calculating your H index in the Scopus tutorial for a workaround. The accuracy of the H index will also be dependent on the thoroughness of the search. For example, an initial search by author may not pick up misspellings and name variations or where the material has been incorrectly or incompletely cited, for example missing issue or volume numbers. You may also be able to increase your H-index value by looking at material not indexed by the main databases. There needs to be some caution applied when using the H-index, particularly if using it to rank or assess the relative performance of two or more people or groups. It is important to ensure that you are always comparing like with like. For example, the H index tends to disadvantage early career researchers. This is because of the relatively short time they have been publishing. 
The longer a researcher has been working in his or her field, the more publications they will have and the longer they will have had to accumulate citations. Different disciplines have markedly different citation behaviours which will have a dramatic effect on the relative age indexes. It should never be used to compare researchers or groups from different disciplines. While the age index is a way to measure impact, it is not necessarily a useful measure of identifying current impact or influence. The age index will not decrease and will invariably increase over time, even once the author has stopped producing publications. The age index is not without its critics, who consider that the use of the age index as a single indicator for the assessment of the scientific career of a researcher is not adequate. However, the H index is widely used because as researchers and academic research institutions are increasingly being asked to demonstrate both the quality and impact of their research, this index provides a useful single indicator of both productivity and citation-based impact.